Good afternoon YouTube, this is Warbles on a lot here with an article out of a New Scientist magazine. Now, one of the joys of being a YouTube attention seeker is I'm six weeks behind with reading New Scientist. So, the Orchid Children came out in 28 January 2012's New Scientist magazine. Are you a sensitive flower or a hardier type? It all may be down to an intriguing set of genes, as David Dobbs finds out. I suppose we better have a look at the full picture there. How's that? Got to keep reminding myself that it's only what I can see in the top half of my reading glasses is what the phone is going to pick up. Okay. Commence the reading. Why are some children better at sharing than others? One attempt to find out uses what you could call the Bamba test. In a large playroom-like lab, a three-year-old spends an hour or so playing games with a friendly woman before snack time is announced. The adult brings out two packs of Bambas, peanut-flavoured corn puffs, peanut-butter-flavoured corn puffs, much coveted in this part of the world. The child's pack, like every normal one, holds 24 of the treats. But when the woman opens hers, she dumps out the contents and cries, Mine has only three. Will the three-year-old share without being asked? Most do not. <coughs> Self-initiated sharing is difficult, says psychologist Ariel Nafo, who runs this, this study at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem in Israel. You have to detect the need, then decide to do it. A few three-year-olds, however, will offer up their bambas. What's different about them? The children most likely to share carried a certain gene variant, the 7R version of DRD4, a gene that affects levels of the important brain chemical dopamine. What made this finding remarkable was that this gene variant has generally been tied to antisocial behaviour. A pile of previous studies found that children with the 7R variant were more likely to be naughty and hyperactive. It had been dubbed the ADHD gene, the brat gene, the drinking gene, even the slut gene. Now, NAFO was effectively calling it the Bamba sharing gene. The bad news gene was having a good effect. This apparently paradoxical result lies at the heart of a major revision taking place in behavioural science, a recasting of the vulnerability gene model of many mood and behavioural disorders. This model, tremendously influential in psychiatry and psychology, has arisen over the past couple of decades as research tied several gene variants to high risk of mood and behavioural troubles, such as depression, aggression, or in the case of DRD4, attention and conduct disorders. Crucially, these genes only cause problems when combined with a difficult childhood. Often termed vulnerability or risk genes, they have been held up as a prime model of how genes interact with environment to affect mood and behaviour. But might we have got these genes all wrong? A fresh look at the evidence is suggesting that in fact they often create greater strength and happiness in people who have fortunate childhoods. The so-called vulnerability genes, in short, make you more attuned and responsive to your environment, whether bad or good. The genes aren't about risk, says Jay Belsky. A psychologist at the University of California, Davis, who helped establish what is being called the plasticity gene hypothesis, among other terms. It is responsiveness, for better or worse. The genetics of behaviour has always been a controversial field with far-reaching implications for individuals and society. The origins of the vulnerability gene model lie in a study published in 1996 that showed we have a greater risk of becoming depressed or anxious if we have a certain version of a gene called CERT. S -E -R -T. The short version of this gene, which is carried by 30 to 50% of people, lowers levels of serotonin, another brain chemical. Serotonin was already much on the minds of psychiatrists and drug companies. The introduction of Prozac had created a growing class of antidepressants called Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors, SSRIs, thought to work by raising serotonin levels. The short version of CERT was quickly dubbed the depression gene, yet that label had to be too simplistic. A short cert does not guarantee depression, it only raises the risk. Environmental factors also had to play a role. That crucial mingling of nature and nurture seemed to be neatly elucidated a few years later by two seminal studies from epidemiologists Av Shalom Caspi and Terry Moffat of King's College London. They found that a short cert raised people's risk of depression only if they suffered rough childhoods or episodes of intense stress as adults. Science, Volume 301, page 386. 
They also showed that a variant of a gene called MAOA, which affects serotonin and several other brain chemicals, increased the chance of violent or sociopathic behaviour, but only in people who were abused as children. Science, volume 297, page 851. The two papers attracted enormous attention and spurred many further studies. While not all replicated Caspian Moffat's results, many did. And so, the vulnerability gene model came to dominate the field of behavioural genetics. But not everyone was buying it. Back in 1995, W. Thomas Boyce, a child development specialist then at the University of California, Berkeley, had been trying to understand why some children seemed to react more to their environment in measures ranging from heartbeat and blood pressures to levels of cortisol, a hormone related to stress. Boyce examined how this reactivity affected rates of asthma in children aged 3 to 5. While some had the same rates of illness regardless of their home life, more reactive kids had worse asthma if they lived in stressful environments and less asthma if in low-stress homes. They were simply more sensitive to their environment, whether bad or good. Headed upside ignored. Boyce was soon joined in this line of inquiry by Bruce Ellis at the University of Arizona in Tucson. Together they speculated that this reactivity also affects mood and behaviour. Drawing on Swedish terms, they distinguish between dandelion children, who did about the same whatever their environment, and orchid children who wilted under poor care but flourished if carefully tended. Development and Psychopathology, Volume 17, page 271. Then, in 1997, Belsky also raised the idea of children who were especially sensitive to their early environments. Initially unaware of Boyce and Ellis's work, he was trying to figure out why some troubled kids responded more than others to counselling or other interventions to change their behaviour. As Belsky, Boyce and Ellis watched the vulnerability gene studies accumulate, they realised these could be the very genes that prompted the sensitivity they had found. And when Belsky delved into the literature, he found evidence showing exactly that. Many vulnerability gene studies indeed seem to show that the so-called bad variants of SERT, DRD4 and MAOA generated extra resilience and other assets in people with fortunate early years, yet the literature largely ignored this upside. In paper after paper, the raw data and graphs indicated the positive effects, but the text failed to explore or even note them. Belsky was happy to, quite happy to note them. In 2006, he and others began publishing new studies and reanalyses of old ones, showing that the so-called vulnerability genes created not just risk, but bidirectional sensitivity. Other groups started to investigate the idea. NAFO, for instance, began exploring DRD4's effect on social behaviour as described earlier. He has shown that as long as parenting is good, toddlers with the 7R variant are more pro-social than those with the more common 4R form. Development and Psychopathology, Volume 23, page 53. The orchids not only shared their bambas, but were also more likely to pick up a researcher's dropped pencil, express sympathy over a bumped knee, and help find and then comfort a lost doll. NAFO found that this edge in sociability and generosity increased over the three years he followed the children. This may simply reflect the natural course of child development, or it may reflect a positive feedback loop as both responsive child and engaged parent react to their good chemistry. Some of the mothers probably carry the 7R variant too, since a 7R child must have at least one 7R parent. NAFO hadn't genotyped them, so he can't say. In 2008, another team showed that DRD4's 7R variant does not just make its bearers more responsive to natural variations in their upbringing, those carrying it also respond more to experimental interventions. In a program for mothers of difficult toddlers that trained them to be more engaged and attentive, children carrying the 7R variant benefited the most. Developmental Psychology, Volume 44, page 293. Belsky, meanwhile, is doing bigger studies that gauge cumulative effects of several plasticity genes. In 2010, he published an analysis drawn from a 12-year study of 1,586 adolescents. He analysed five genes, SERT, MAOA, DRD4, and two other genes that regulate dopamine, and collected data on the teen's behaviour and self-control and on the mother's engagement in their lives. The numbers once crunched showed no significant effects on girls. Maybe they have to have an involved father. But the 754 boys did react differently according to their genes, showing distinct dandelion or orchid effects. Journal of Child Psychology and Psychiatry, volume 52, page 619. The boys with no or only one plastic variant proved to be dandelions.
I'm pretty sure you should be able to see this. Um, we've got my kangaroo coming in the background. Um, where are we? We oh warbles. Did react differently. The boys with no or only one plasticity variant proved to be dandelions. They fared about the same regardless of how engaged their mothers were. Those with two to five plasticity variants, however, responded like orchids, and the more they had, the more sensitive they were. See diagram left. Okay, so I'm figuring that the head camera should be looking pretty good at this. We've got good behaviour at the top here. We've got naughty behaviour at the bottom. We've got worse parenting. And we got best parenting. Yeah? So, we've now got dandelions and we've got orchids. And if you've got really bad parenting, a dandelion actually does slightly better than if they've got perfect parenting. Isn't that interesting? If you've got two orchid genes, three orchid genes, four or five orchid genes, you require the best possible parenting to get good behaviour, and if you've got the worst possible parenting, you are going to get really horrible child behaviour. With the caveat that this type of multiple gene study has not yet been replicated, the effect seems to fit the orchid hypothesis beautifully. It also accords with the principle that complex traits are generally determined by many genes, not just one. In addition, the lack of effect in boys with just one plasticity variant offers an explanation for a puzzle hanging over the field for years. The failure of some single gene studies to show the effect it expects, the expected effects. Belsky's research suggests that the effects of any one gene depend on all the others. Supports coming in from other fields as well. Orchid dandelion effects have been found in rhesus monkeys, the only other primate beside humans to have the short cert variant. Ethologist Stephen Suomai at the US National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, Maryland, has done experiments with these monkeys that cannot be done with people, such as swapping babies at birth to switch the kind of parenting they receive. Nice guy. Unlike dandelion monkeys, orchid monkeys tend to turn out neurotic if raised by insecure neurotic mothers, but resilient and self-assured if ra raised by secure, competent mothers. Read parent, I would suggest. The orchid hypothesis also meshes with observations of adults in psychotherapy. Since 1997, Californian psychiatrists Elaine and Arthur Aron have written about what they call highly sensitive persons, or HSPs, who are assessed specially responsive not just to trouble, but to many of life's pleasures and subtleties. As Elaine Aron sees it, this group, comprising an estimated 15 to 20 percent of the population, perceive life at a finer, more nuanced scale. As the plasticity theory gained ground, the Arons and others have wondered if HSPs are essentially orchid children grown up. They argue that HSPs share with the orchid children a particularly reactive psychological and sensory response to the world. Now the first genetic evidence is emerging to support that view. One set of preliminary results presented at last year's annual meeting of the US Society of Biological Psychiatry in San Francisco found that HSPs were more likely to carry the short cert gene uh, gives a web address. Another also published in 2011 correlated HSP characteristics with 10 variations that affect dopamine levels. Plus one, volume six, page E2, E216, 36. Oh, big thick document. <clears throat> okay, so the rest of it here talks about how it could be an evolutionary asset. Um, Sensitivity is more often than not adaptive and therefore selected for. This idea has gained credence by the discovery over the last decade that many of the plasticity genes have spread rapidly through humankind over the last 50,000 years. Um, orchid genes could provide an advantage in several ways. To start with, they seem to create better mental health and greater resilience in people with secure, stimulating childhoods. The problem traits they can generate, such as anxiety, aggression or ADHD, could help survival in conflict-ridden or volatile environments. Plasticity also, genes also boost resilience at the group level by creating a mix of steady doers, dandelions and individuals with greater behavioural range, orchids. Some evolutionary anthropologists argue that these traits are found in many carriers, may help drive human expansion. Today the 7R variant is most common in tribes that migrated fastest and furthest from Africa. So isn't that interesting? 
The way to get good kids is to give them really good parenting and whatever their genetic makeup, that will work.